G'day guys and gal. With the release and release of the highly anticipated End and Death Volume 2, a very, very popular fan theory was finally debunked. Now I actually was a huge fan of this theory and massively spread its awareness in the community, with many people liking it. A lot of people also really hated it, as it was way too much of a plot twist for their small minds to comprehend. I'm of course speaking of the theory that Sanguinius fights Horus, Force of the Black Rage, which in turn then causes Sanguinius to beat Horus before then mauling the Emperor, and the Emperor being the one that was forced to kill Sanguinius. It would have been a wild shakeup, which actually also would have fixed a shitload of plot holes with the original lore, which was that Horus kills Sanguinius and then the Emperor kills Horus. Now, while the title of this video seems to indicate that I was wrong, this isn't really the case, as I am never wrong. I never actually said I believe the theory was true, and if I had to bet on it, there's no way I would put money on GW making such a bold move. However, I just really, really liked the theory. Today I'll be going over the theory in detail, why despite it now being proved wrong it was a great theory, and what actually happened in the lore. I would say this is spoilers for the End and Death Volume 2, but like, Horus killing Sanguinius has been established lore for decades now, so get the fuck over it. None of you guys even know how to read anyways. Now let's get into it. It's summer now, so I'm gonna keep this video pretty lean. So I'll get right into the nitty gritty of the theory. Basically, it's stated that during the fight between Horus and Sanguinius, Horus was to get the upper hand, with Sanguinius then willingly embracing the Black Rage in order to change his destiny and defeat his brother. In doing so, the Blood Angel Legion would also fall to the Black Rage on Terra, as they did in canon, rather than doing it when Sanguinius died. Sanguinius would overcome Horus and mortally wound him, however, not outright killing him, at least not in my version. The Emperor would then enter the room, seeing Sanguinius covered in blood over a downed Horus. The Emperor would call to his son Sanguinius, who would turn to him, however, Sanguinius was lost to the rage. The Emperor would try calm Sanguinius down with words, gestures, and psychic probing, but Sanguinius would then attack the Emperor. The Emperor would be desperately trying to save Sanguinius, allowing his son to maul him as he obviously didn't want to kill the glorious Hawk Boy. In the moments before the Emperor would die, he would realize that if he let Sanguinius kill him, it would be the end of the Imperium, as Sanguinius would be this rampaging monster, the Blood Angels would stay in the Black Rage, and kill the remaining Loyalists, and all would be lost. So the Emperor sheds the last of his humanity and summons the power to kill his beloved son. Then he limps over to the severely wounded Horus, and in order to stop Chaos from seeing what occurred here, he would annihilate Horus' soul, as if Chaos knew that the Emperor killed Sanguinius, it could also use that knowledge to break the Imperium. After this act, the Emperor would fall, with Rogel Dawn rushing into the room and seeing the mess. That's where the theory ends, as the Emperor would then be put onto the Golden Throne, with Sanguinius being remembered as the hero he was, not the monster he died as. With Sanguinius' death, the Blood Angels would be released from the rage, although it would then forever slumber within them. I personally fucking love this theory as it's tragic and grimdark, Sanguinius desperately trying to fight against his destiny, but in doing so dooming his soul. To a large degree it also makes much sense in the current canon lore, that being that the Emperor struggled to fight Horus out of compassion and only made the decision when it was too late. But like, bruh, have you met the Emperor? This dude doesn't give a fuck. Horus had been a bold piece of shit for years now and had just killed Sanguinius. The Emperor would be fucking fuming and wouldn't have held back out of some random love for Horus, nor would watching Olanus Pius die trigger him to go insano style if he already saw Sanguinius' corpse. It's also the most insane plot twist that is physically possible without changing a single thing about the setting or official canon or creating any plot holes. So for the people that say it doesn't make any sense, your mum doesn't make any sense, bitch. But alas, that didn't happen. Here is what actually did. Sanguinius, after fighting non-stop for weeks, killing Kabunda, Angron, and a shitload of traitors, confronts a fresh, completely unscathed Horus. At first, Horus powers down to his normal Primarch power level, instead of his Mega Chaos power, partially out of pride, but mostly because he still wants Sanguinius to join him. Funnily enough, Horus actually wants the Emperor, Valdor, Rogel, Sanguinius, and all of them to join him. As he said in the past, he actually despises the traitor Primarchs and wishes that instead he got people like Gilliman and the Lion to join him, not Angron or Conrad Curse. So he believes that he can turn Sanguinius, but obviously that ship has long sailed. However, it does give us a cool little insight to how delusional Horus is at this point. In their initial battle, Sanguinius has the upper hand as he flies around and dives in at lightning speed to chip away at Horus' health bar. Eventually, Horus is cut down and falls to his knees, at which point Sanguinius then goes for a no hesitation decapitation strike. However, Horus has reached his limit and activates Turbo Cum Lord Chaos Mode, catching Sanguinius's sword. At this point, the fight is one-sided despite Sanguinius giving a good showing. Horus is like a god at this point and beats Sanguinius down. He then begins beating Sanguinius like a dog with World Breaker. Sanguinius tries to say his final words, but his lungs are smashed and full of blood, so he begins choking. Horus keeps beating him, which causes half of Sanguinius' face to hang off like a mask. 
Horus then picks up Sanguinius and snaps his neck and back, killing the Hawk Boy in the most brutal fashion possible. It's a very mean spirited, no honor or dignity death, which I actually like, as too often our Imperial heroes go out in style. But with Sangi, it was this hardcore, ruthless death. To add insult to the injury, demons then come out of the shadows to string up Sanguinius' broken corpse as Horus then waits for his father. But that's the scene, but a few other things happen which indicate that GW is going to do some subtle retcons to fix the plot holes. For example, it's revealed that the Emperor is on the brink of becoming a new Chaos God to kill Horus, but is talked out of it and releases the power, dispelling his compassion in the process. So it's likely that the Emperor will fight Horus with supreme prejudice from the beginning, but it's only when he embraces this dark power will he gain the strength to kill Horus. Horus, creating a situation where the Emperor Loki becomes a Chaos God, but must overcome it. Maybe the fact that he is currently a shriveled corpse is from the effort of the Emperor rejecting the power he used to kill Horus, and if his will broke, he could ascend it any second. Or maybe he's been a Chaos God for the last 10,000 years, and the Imperium is just a shiny, cleaner version of a Chaos Cult. Now that would be spicy. Either way, while a part of me will miss the Sanguinius theory, I'm glad GW recognizes that the current lore doesn't make much sense and have been doing things to make it more compelling and fix those plot holes. Regardless, Sanguinius, you were a fucking real one, even if your death wasn't particularly fun. Pace.